Hello again and welcome to another Morning and Glory Warhammer 40k video. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about infantry. Oh, I know, what a surprise, what a shock. The guy that likes playing pure infantry guard, the guy that likes hordes, wants to talk about infantry. But what I actually want to do is, rather than talk about infantry generally, I want to talk about specifically what my go-to infantry composition looks like for my competitive guard armies. What data sheets do I prefer? What loadouts and why these are the ones that I seem to put into my lists time and time again. That's what we'll be covering. So without further ado, let's not mess around any further. Let's fix bayonets and charge right into today's episode. Now, before we talk about any specific data sheets, I just want to briefly cover what I see the role of infantry is in my competitive armies. I always say that it comes down to the infantryman and his rifle, and whereas a lot of people across all sorts of different factions kind of see their infantry, especially their battle line infantry, as an afterthought or maybe as a tax to sit on an objective, I've always found in the guard that the infantry is the foundation, and it is the first thing that goes into my list before any tanks, before any characters, the first thing that goes in is my battle line, my infantry corps. Attention guardsmen, the commissariat has detected you have not yet liked this video. Do so immediately or else you will face the Empress wrath. And anyone who has not yet subscribed to the channel will be transferred to the penal battalions. That is all. Move out! And the reason that I put such importance on guard infantry is because I find it to be highly efficient. Many other factions struggle with getting any use out of their battle line. It's something that I've come to appreciate about the Guard is we actually have a viable core of infantry, where some factions just don't. And having this good core of infantry unlocks a lot of different options for you when you're on the table. But fundamentally, if we're just boiling it down to brass tacks, if we're just getting down to the real core of the issue, 40k is a game of standing on circles. It's about doing primary objectives. You also do have secondary objectives, but for the guard, one of the best ways of taking and holding those primary objectives is by leveraging our battle line infantry, which is a great source of efficient, cheap, and actually effective objective control. And this is the role that I use my infantry for. I like to use them to push onto those objectives, to fight into the middle ground, to stand on those circles and to try and stand on those circles better than anyone else. So bearing that in mind, now let's get into what specific infantry choices I like, and hopefully that'll give some context for my decisions. Out of the infantry squad, the Caden Shock Troops, the Death Corps of Krieg, and the Catachans, the two that I find myself relying on the most has to be the Kashan Jungle Fighters and the Death Corps of Krieg. Now, I have used the other two day sheets and I have used them effectively, but it's those other two. It's the Army of Rambo. It's the Gas Mask Boys, which I just find myself going back to time and time again. But let's dig a little bit deeper, starting off with the Catachans. Now, I like to take my Catachans and all my infantry in 20-man blobs. I just think that gives them enough numbers to be able to storm across the map and get onto the objective and hold that objective. If you just take a 10-man squad and try and move it across, all you're really doing is creating a speed bump, a bit of a screening unit, but that's it. There's no real substance to it. And it's not that hard for the enemy to kill 20 infantry, but it's a, it, it actually takes dedicated firepower. It actually has to become part of their dedicated shooting plan rather than just throwing a few spare bits of supplementary firepower. A few stubbers here, a few bolters there. As for the weapon loadouts on these 20-man blobs, 
I always go for the four flames and two Vox casters because they're the only options Catachans have and there's no point leaving them at home. There is another additional reason. On their own, I don't really see Catachans as a combat unit. It's a bunch of guardsmen with their strength four AP minus one attacks on the charge. It's okay, but hitting on fours, I don't really rely on it. But if I do want to include a little bit of close combat in my army, then I take Colonel Ironhand Strachan. And he can only join Catachans. And he's a really, really good officer, really good character. I don't leave home without him. He has been responsible for many, many glorious acts on the battlefield. And at the same time, he's a great source of orders. But he is only a guard character, so he's not super tanky. So he needs that Catachan bodyguard to move up the battlefield and to deliver him into the melee that he excels so well at. So we know that 20 man blobs of Catachans are good and that Strachan adds extra bits of spice to them. I guess the big question is, how many Catachans are we looking at? How many of these blobs are we taking? Well, my go-to Catachan complement is two 20 man squads with one of those squads being led by Strachan. This forms my first wave, my vanguard. When I'm deploying these guys, they tend to almost always go at the front of my deployment zone. And I can be a little bit ballsy with their deployment as well, thanks to their scout move. Great thing about Catachans is you can deploy them out in the open. And then if you don't get first turn, you can scout them defensively behind some cover. Or if you do get first turn, you can scout move them aggressively forward, taking ground early and getting on those middle objectives as soon as possible. Getting on middle objectives not only, of course, start setting up for raking in those primary points from turn two, but also if you draw a secondary objective, like secure no man's land or extend battle lines you can easily do that with a scout move and then a regular move and then also you've got move 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 and advance if you really need to start moving at the board quickly right from the beginning of the game so this gives us 40 infantry with an officer who can do two orders so we can boss both units around as our first wave the problem with catachans is they are pretty fragile they don't have any feel no pain they're just not that durable in general. They're just basic infantry with a five up say they can be swept to one side. What we need to support this is a second wave. So whilst the enemy is busy clearing away the Catachans that are trying to get onto the objectives first, the follow-up wave can then move on to the objectives afterwards and really lock things down. So the first wave moves quickly. We need a second wave that can tank hits. And this is where the second favorite infantry data sheet comes in, which is the Death Corps of Krieg. Now my go-to composition for the Death Corps is again a 20-man blob led by a Death Corps Marshal. Now Death Corps Marshals are quite an expensive character and they are a forward world option at the moment. In fact, one Death Corps Marshal does cost more than Colonel Ironhand Draken, which is kind of wild. And the Death Corps themselves are significantly more expensive than the Catachan. So this second wave is a larger investment. But I also find that this second wave, it achieves a lot, if not more than the Catachans pretty much every game. The Catachans surge forward, die, take objectives, reinforcement, come back, you know, Striker might beat the crap out of something. That's their first wave, their fire and forget. The Kriegers are more sustainable, they're more long lasting. They move up afterwards and they are a real pain in the ass for your opponent to deal with because between the fact that you can easily get cover on your uh, on the majority of your unit on a competitive board with things like WTC and UKTC terrain layouts and the fact that you can give them the order take cover which gives them plus one to their save as well you can get your Kriegers up to a three plus save and then the Death Corps Marshal has a 5 up feel no pain for himself and he gives a 5 plus feel no pain out to his entire unit. And then there's even more because Death Corps of Creed units come with their own Death Corps Medipack which does not give them a feel no pain. It actually lets them resurrect D3 guys a turn. So even if your opponent is like clearing through them, you can bring them back over the course of several turns and you'll 
you'd be surprised how much that can regenerate a squad. But it's not just tanking hits that the Death Court is good at. One thing that they can also do is supplement your firepower. Now, guard main firepower, the proper damage dealing, is pretty much always going to come from your heavy hitters, like your tanks, and also your artillery. But... You can supplement that. You can still get noticeable output of damage from your Death Core units because they're just loaded up with so many special weapons. Each squad can take two melter guns and two grenade launchers. And you can get two plasma guns in there as well. And on each sergeant in a 20-man squad, of which you get two, you can take a plasma pistol and a power sword. In addition, their Grim Demeanor ability gives them plus one to hit if they've taken one casualty. And this stacks with the Take Aim order. Now, Take Aim gives you plus one to your Ballistic Skill characteristic. And the Grim Demeanor gives you plus one to hit to your Dice Roll. So, trust me, they absolutely do stack. This gets Garsman hitting on twos, which is phenomenal when you've got that many special weapons. If they go below half strength, they could also get plus one to wound. Now, what's kind of funny is if I find myself going below half strength and there's an enemy unit in front of me, I'm like, you know what? If I want to go for the extra damage, I might not even use my death call medic. I'll go below that half strength and then be like, oh, I'll just regenerate maybe one or two guys back into the squad, but I'll stay... I'll stay with like nine guys in the squad. And this allows me to then get plus one to hit and plus one to wound. And with all those special weapons like Plasma and Melter, that's when Death Core go from being supplementary firepower to proper firepower. Let's not forget that the Death Core Marshal also has a Plasma Pistol and a Power Sword, which benefits from Gim Demeanor and also orders whilst he's leading the squad. So like with the Kachans, the final question is, how many should we be taking? And I again go for two blobs, and each one is led by Death Core Marshal. I find this to be a nice middle ground between getting the amount of bodies that I want, but also not spending too many points, because these Creek blobs with the Marshals are coming in at nearly 200 points a pop. Also, I like having the two separate Death Core Marshals because it gives me a bit of flexibility. Sometimes I have to keep my Catachans grouped together because Draken's just got a section's order range. But with the Kriegers, I can put one on the left flank, one on the right flank, and they can operate independently because they've each got their own officer ordering them and looking after them. So in total, I like to have a first wave of 40 Catachans in two 20-man blobs and Strachan, and they storm up early. They take ground quickly, but they also die quickly. I follow this up with a second wave once the distraction Catachans have gone in, and that second wave consists of 40 Kriegers, also in two 20-man squads, and two Death Corps Marshals, one leading each unit. This gives me a total of 80 battle line infantry and three supporting characters. That is a significant number of bodies without spending so much that I can't afford my tanks. I have had a lot of comments from my opponents saying that it's just a lot of infantry to chew through. And that problem that a lot of people have when facing this much infantry is only compounded when I can reinforce them with the 20-man blobs with 2CP and they still have a shed load of tanks that they have to contend with as well. But of course, all of this is just like my opinion, man. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. What is your favorite infantry data sheet and how do you like to fill out your infantry core? What is your go-to composition hope you enjoyed today's video don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe to never miss an episode would you like to know more if so then please consider becoming a channel member or patreon by supporting the channel not only will you be doing your part but you'll also be helping me create more content for your viewing pleasure and unlocking a whole host of perks. You get everything from a badge next to your name, custom emojis, but the big one is access to the Mordian Glory Discord server, an online community with almost two and a half thousand active members. It's 
always popping off in the MG Discord. We've got channels for army lists, hobbying, tactics, stories, and even a pretty spicy meme section as well. For all you greenhorns that wanted to see the Mordian glory hole, today is a lucky day. And joking aside, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of the current channel members and Patreons. You guys are amazing. Truly the lifeblood of the channel. I could not do Mordian glory full time without the incredible and generous support of my members so thank you guys so much and last but certainly not least i want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier patreons these are the war masters the people who have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty to a heartfelt thank you to alex dengal bon bon vert mad larkin marcus roberts mark panconi rj scorpion swordfish trombone Try Again Bragg, John Stubbs, Nick Wolf, Diesel Fox, and August Barney. Seriously guys, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Your support is incredible and it makes a huge difference. Thank you so much. That's all for now. Hope you've all enjoyed today's video. And of course, as always, see you guys next time.